I'm Ann Archer. And I'm Michelle Danner. And, and you're, you're watching Life, Life Minute, Minute TV. Her student list as an acting coach reads like a who's who of Hollywood. The famed teacher Michelle Danner, also an established screen director, her latest Miranda's Victim is due out in the fall, gave us the scoop on her recent masterpiece on the live stage, a one-woman virtual show called A Ticket to the Circus. And it stars Golden Globe BAFTA and Oscar nominee Anne Archer. They stopped by virtually to tell us all about it. I approached Anne and she loved it. She brought her beautiful grace and elegance to this piece. And we worked on it during COVID. And then we, because it was COVID, we did it as a virtual theater piece. And now we're in the process of, um, you know, we're gonna do it for the stage. But uh, it's, uh, it's a great piece about the, the wife, one of the wives, of mm -hmm. Norman Mailer. And who brought it to me was his youngest son, John Buffalo Mailer, who's a good friend of mine. I had heard of the book and then I read the book. And I was always fascinated about this whole life of Norman Mailer. I mean, it's a slice of our history, of literature, of what those times were like in New York. When Michelle brought it to me, I thought, oh my God, this is the best part that's ever been put in my lap. Uh, she was a very, very interesting lady. The fact that she could get out of Arkansas as a young woman and end up in New York in this very glamorous life, which it was in the 60s uh, and 70s, actually. And I think her world is what's really interesting about this, you mm -hmm. know, aside from the fact that Norman Miller was an iconic writer, but they had such an interesting life mm -hmm. and was so rich mm -hmm. and it was filled with, you know, obviously love because they had this big family. He had, he had six wives, but he had, I think, 10 children all yeah. together. Yeah. Uh, and she became stepmother. She, they had one child together and she became stepmother to all the others and they all loved her. She was this amazing woman. And ultimately I think that this is a real love story. It was pretty amazing what she was able to accomplish. So it was a pleasure and, and, and a welcome challenge for me to get my teeth into this character. And you know, it's not taken for granted, I think when an actor takes on the role of someone who has lived, that you can take on the flame of that person. Yeah. But you did, you yeah. took on her flame, yeah. you made her come to life. We had a lot of fun rehearsing it because it's so full of life and Michelle is a wonderful director, really a delight to work with, she really frees the actor to explore and find their truth. And I don't think I've ever had a director give me that much room to find my truth as Michelle does and then bring out the best in you. And we had to ask about perhaps one of Archer's most iconic roles, playing the jilted wife in the 1987 thriller, Fatal Attraction. I think because it finally told the story that, you know, everyone thinks about and doesn't necessarily talk about, uh, you know, a, a man who's happily married, having an affair and then the woman turning into this sort of villainous after him. It, it's the dread of any man who's ever been unfaithful. If you ever come near my family again, I'll kill you, you understand? And, um, you know, so it, it just it just rang a bell for so many people in our culture at that time that this movie was made about something like that. So uh, I think that's probably it. I used to say that I always knew about a man's capacity for fidelity by the way they would react to the movie. If, if an interviewer, a male interviewer said to me, uh, don't you think that was kind of heavy punishment for an affair? Uh, I knew that he played around. And if he said, God, it just made me want to go home and hug my wife and kids, I knew a lot about that too. So I had a lot of fun while we were promoting it because uh, I learned a lot about the world we live in, or at least the men that uh, interviewed me. I learned a lot about them. Uh, Michael is the ultimate professional and very generous. He really always wants to give female actresses their chance in front of the camera. He's protective of them. He gives them their space. Uh, Glenn was fabulous. She wrote me the most beautiful letter I've ever received from an actor about my performance in the movie. Uh, I've kept it. I'll treasure it forever. So I, I 
did have the opportunity to work with beautiful people and Adrian Lyon, the director, was phenomenal. So I, I had an opportunity to work with wonderful people and I've seen them off and on, but we live on different coasts. They both live in New York and I live in LA. So the chance of getting together is, you know, not as often as one would hope. As for their advice for aspiring actors. Well, I would say really study the craft. You know, really watch a lot of things, educate yourself, read tons, and have conversations. You know, find a way to have conversations with other artists about what it takes, what's the process, and develop and embrace a process that you're excited about and that you will, you know, redefine and fine tune. And, uh, you know, there's nothing more exciting to me than being an artist. You have to immerse yourself, you know, you can't just tiptoe in the water. You just have to really dive in and go all in and give all of yourself to it. You have to want it worse than the rest of the world doesn't want you to have it because it kind of feels that way. There's so much rejection. You have to love it that much. And if you think there's something else you could do, then you probably shouldn't be. You just have to feel like this is the only thing I can do in my life. I, I, my, I won't be happy. I won't have found my purpose in life unless I can be an artist. And um, I grew up in a family of artists. My mother was an actress, my father an actor, and my stepfather a theatrical producer. We used to say that artists were the chosen people. They're the ones that create new ideas. They're the ones that fill people up from the inside. I mean, everything happens because of art, whether it's architecture or painting or acting or music. Um, it all happens. Be a culture is only as great as those dreams that are dreamed by artists. To get your ticket to the circus, just visit eventbrite.com. But hurry, it only runs till July 18th. To hear more of this interview, visit our podcast, Life Minute TV, on iTunes and all streaming podcast platforms.